Mum's the word for Miss Carpenter's landlady. She says she makes it a point not to poke her nose into the business of others. If we followed that advice, we'd never get anywhere, would we, Watson? Did the dispatcher show you the wagon, Holmes? Not only did he show it to me, it revealed some very interesting clues. Oh, do tell. The wagon housed a cage, which of course was no surprise. The door was wide open. I found that the padlock had been sprung, left to dangle on the ring bolt. Blood was smeared all over the stairs leading in and all over the floor inside. Oh, how perfectly nauseating. It was. But what interested me even more was what lay in the corner of the cage. What was it? Two large leather collars. Attached to the end of each collar was a leather pouch. Both pouches had been ripped open and emptied. What do you suppose it adds up to? Time will tell, Watson. Time will tell. I ain't seen Aiden or Air of Collieretti today, but I can assure you he's pretty much on the up and up. Oh, he's a proper gentleman then. No, I wouldn't be going that far, mate. He's fond of his gin, and he's not above sporting with the ladies, if you know what I mean. I'm quite sure I do. You catch Eddie on an off day, he can be a cantankerous sot. Seen him bust up a bloke or two with the professors. That Marcy Edwards. Never liked her. Never liked them blokes she brought round neither. In fact, I packed her up this morning. Threw her out on her cheap bottom. Don't know where she went. Don't care neither. Mr. Ellis has not yet returned from his assignment in Europe. Well, it looks as if he'll be of no help to us on this case. The victim, Stephen Lyons, was last seen in the company of Sylvia Carpenter, Marcy Edwards, and Collier Eddy at the Red Bull Inn. It was a simple matter for the police to identify and apprehend them. Would you like to talk to them? Yes, thank you. Tell me, Miss Carpenter, what happened last evening? He just dropped down dead, he did. I done nothing to him, I swear it. Miss Carpenter, did you know the gentleman? Never seen him before. Marcy, me and Collier was just sitting around talking about this and that and the sailor comes up and he says he'd like to join us. So we started off to Marcy's place. We only got a few steps and the sailor starts gasping for air. He made an awful sound and then he just killed over dead. I took off like a shot. Did you notify the authorities? No. Why should I? And then he just dropped over, dead as a doornail. That's precisely the story Miss Carpenter told us. Well, then that proves that it's the truth. Looks like the cop has got the wrong girl. But that ain't unusual, is it? I understand the man was robbed. Well, the man was dead. What use did he have a few quid? Dead or not, it's still stealing, my good woman. I was out for a little fun, is all. Never seen the bloke before, and I had no cause to harm him. The police seem to think that his money and gold earring might have been cause enough. Oh, I took the opportunity as it came, is all. But I didn't murder him for it. What can I do for you two hombres? We're investigating last night's murder of the two lions in Hyde Park. Oh, now that was something. I'm telling you, I've been from the Pecos to the Pampas, from the Sierra to the Sahara, and I never would have thought I'd have two of my lions killed in the capital city of the civilized world. Oh my, then the lions were yours, Mr. Slade. Well, in a manner of speaking, they were with the show. Barry O'Neill actually owned them, poor compadre. He's laid up in St. Thomas Hospital with a busted leg. He was helping on the ship yesterday when a crate fell smack on him. You'd be laid up for some time, poor fella. Poor me, his cats kind of made my show. Do you know how he acquired the cats? Oh, he caught him himself in Africa with his bare hands. Probably the only hands that ever handled those cats. I'm telling you, they take your head off as soon as look at you. So no one else could safely get close to the lions? Well, there's Barry's wife. She's traveling with the show, too. Well, she's in the act, but just uh, window dressing, if you know what I mean. Uh, I hear she's staying with Barry's folks here in London. You do appear to be up to your eyebrows in something, Hogg. It's the jewel robberies here and on the continent. Ah, yes, the Society Burglars and the Oldenburg Jewels. I've been reading about it in the Times. 
The cases are quite similar in several respects, though I'm baffled at how the thief or thieves have managed to escape detection. I agree. It is a mystery. <sighs> so, what brings you here, Watson? Holmes and I received a strange note instructing us to check today's times. We discovered two items of interest, the murder of Lyons in Hyde Park and the mysterious death of a Stephen Lyons. Interesting coincidence, don't you think? Oh, it is. I do wish I could help you, but I haven't kept up with the latest since I buried myself in this jewelry business. Oh, no. What do you want? I thought I was going to have a nice quiet day. Somebody has asked us to check today's times, and I was wondering if you'd be so kind as to tell me what you know about the mysterious deaths in the Southeast. There's nothing mysterious about it. The culprits are in custody at Old Bailey. The victim's body is at Parks. And what about the murdered lions? What of them? What did you find at the scene of the crime? Holmes wants me to record it precisely. What did I find? Two lions shot a number of times, lying on top of one another. Wagon tracks leading away from the bodies. Footprints in the dark grass. How many footprints, Inspector? Oh, who knows? I, I believe there were two sets of boot prints, if you want to get specific. They entered and exited from the wagons. Now, will that do it for your Mr. Holmes, Dr. Watson? Nearly. And what became of the wagon? Surely Holmes will want to know that. <sighs> Abandoned in Archbishop's Park. I had a man drive it over to our central carriage stables, largely so that someone could look after the horses. Any motives for the murder? Unfortunately, I, uh, I haven't a clue. It says here that lions are not only native to Africa, but also to parts of Persia, Mesopotamia, and India. The image of the lion is used to symbolize the power of Britain. But of course, we knew that already, didn't we, Holmes? Indeed, Walton, indeed. Lion's landlady says he's dead. We already know that, Watson. Did you find out anything else? He owed her two months back rent, but he told her he'd be paying up plus several months in advance come Tuesday. Lions? The beasts or the dead chap? The dead chap they found down on St. George's Road. Now that's a lion I've seen. What do you suppose was the cause of death? For once I believe the papers had it right. It was a drug, some sort of poison. What sort of drug? I don't know. It affected the respiratory system. His lips and fingertips were quite blue, but his eyes had a distinct yellow tint. I'm afraid I've never seen anything like it before. Something rather exotic, I should imagine. Why, HR, whatever are you doing? Uh, going home, Whitson, going home. Going home? I was hoping you could answer a question about the mysterious death of Stephen Lyons. Lyons! Ah, yes. Eight, nine, six. No real evidence for that one. Just some clothes. No personal effects. Clothing undamaged. But traces of sea salt indicating he may have been a sailor. Well, that's about it. Now, if you excuse me, I'm off. Ta-ta! Ta-ta? And do say hello to your friend Mr. Helms for me, will you, old chap? Let me have a look at this list. Of all of these people, Thomas O'Neill is the only name that rings a bell. He was a suspect in several jewel robberies, but he was never convicted. I see. I was wondering if you could tell me anything about the death of your son's lions. Oh, I wish we could. You know, Barry has traveled all over the world. And to think it would happen right here in London. You've traveled with him, haven't you, Mrs. O'Neill? Yes, I did. For all five years of our marriage. But I must say, I'm getting a bit weary of it. I mean, really, Mr. Holmes, it's no life for a married man to go traipsing all around the world. Of course it isn't. He should settle down and raise a family. My husband, Carol, could get Barry a job down at Rogers and Singer. Before I die, it would be nice to have one of my boys right nearby. Where is your other son? Last we heard, Thomas was in Oldenburg, Germany. Germany? Royce Late Show just finished a tour of Germany, did it not? Yes, it did. Tell me, 
Did you happen to see your brother-in-law while you were there? I certainly did not. But my husband might have. I can't really say for sure. You see, we don't talk about Thomas much. I don't mean to pry, but may I ask why? Oh, it's nothing really. You see, years ago, Thomas loaned Barry some money when he was trying to put together his animal show. And now Thomas believes that Barry is forever in his debt. Sorry, sir, but you got the wrong O'Neill. Well, I'm related. I haven't seen any of that nutty family since Grand O'Neill's wake back in 74. Well, Watson, it seems that old Langdale is at home with the raging case of the sniffles. Perhaps we should call on him there. No, I dare say we'll all be better off if we leave him alone with his tissues and his mustard plaster. Don't know a thing about them jungle-type lions, but I might be able to help you out with Stephen Lyons. How so, Shinwell? Did you know him? Well, he came in here from time to time whenever his ship was in port. A friend of mine up at Pentonville knew his brother, says the two of them were lockpickers of the ace variety. Anyways, just yesterday afternoon, Stephen Lyons comes in here with some red-headed fella. About an hour after Lyons left, in comes Derek Quinn, and he struts right over to this red-headed bloke. Who might Derek Quinn be? Don't know, sir. But I've never liked the looks of him, I haven't. What about Thomas O'Neill? Do you know anything about him? Don't believe I've ever met him. But from what I hear about the bloke, I'm surprised I didn't run into him in the slammer. What have you heard? It's only rumor, mind you. But he's suspected of every jewel theft from here to Timbuktu. And they says he'd two-time you in the wink of an eye if it'd line his pockets. Stephen Lyons. He was a first officer of Aberdeen Navigation on the SS Trueheart. <laughs> but he was always talking about buying his own ferry boat. He was in here just last night. Was anyone with him? He came in with a red-headed bloke. But the fella left after just that one drink. <laughs> then Lyons has a drink with Wally Sharp, who comes in now and then. Sharp left, and Lyons spots Sylvia Carpenter and that Marcy Edwards, who was sitting with one of their regular customers, Collier Eddy. So Lyons goes over there, <laughs> staggers over if you want to know the truth, or we hadn't had but a couple of drinks. I've seen him put quite a bit away at other times without ever showing a sign. So he goes over there, sits down, they get all friendly like, and then they all left together. Mr. O'Neill, if you don't mind, we'd like to ask you some questions about your son. I knew he'd bring no good with him. That's the very reason I told him to stay away from the house last night. And I can tell you and your other constable friend here that I don't know nothing about what he's been up to. We're not from the police, Mr. O'Neill. We're just trying to find out about the murder of your son's lions. Oh, you hear about Barry? I thought it was Tommy what brung you. Me Barry's a little wild, but he'll settle down with time. But what do you mean by wild, Mr. O'Neill? If you don't call getting all cosy with a bunch of jungle cats wild, then I don't know what could be. Between you and me, I'm glad those bloody cats are dead. Why is that? Maybe now he'll worry more about the bloody British lion keeping the Irish under its paw. Mr. O'Neill, Dr. John Watson, may I speak with you for a moment? What about? Your lions. We're investigating their murder. Oh, you're from the police? No, I'm working with Sherlock Holmes. The lions were yours, were they not? Yes. And such good lads, both of them. Lenny and Bruce. We've been together so long. I don't know what I shall do without them. Do you have any notion who would want your lions dead? Uh, no, not really. I can't quite imagine who would... Oh, two innocent lions, dead. I... There, there, Mr. O'Neill. I assure you, Mr. Holmes and I will get to the bottom of this. Captain Sharp, how well did you know Stephen Lyons? He was my first officer. Fact is, we didn't get on too well. 
He didn't like taking orders. Always talked about having his own ship someday. But Aberdeen's doesn't pay much, so where would a man like him get his hands on that kind of money? When did you see him last? Well, last night at the Red Bull, we had a drink together. Stephen Lyons has been on board for about two years now. To tell you the truth, I had just begun to look into irregularities in his paperwork. What prompted you to do that? It seems like some things started disappearing from behind locked doors. Never found any of it. But when I asked him about it, he was rather evasive. My, that sounds incriminating. But more than that, I had reason to believe that he carried unassigned cargo for his own profit. What sort of cargo, Mr. Reason? Everything, from horse collars to gems to French perfumes. When did you discover this? Following our recent passage on the Rhine. It appears that Barry and Thomas O'Neill are the sons of Carol and Olivia O'Neill. Very observant, Watson. It was nothing, Holmes. Mr. Topper, I am curious about the coincidence of your letter to the editor and the murder of two lions in Hyde Park. I assure you that while the symbolism of the act does not escape me, I abhor any sort of violence and am quite capable of making my point by other means. I'm a firm believer that the pen is mightier than the sword. What did you learn from the zoo director, Holmes? All of his animals, including the lions, have been accounted for. That's quite a relief, isn't it? Indeed. 